everybody welcome back Ruben Texas all water fishing and today I'm gonna to talk to you about rod selection when you're looking at fishing for inshore fish what what rods are best to fish with you know I get asked this uh, quite a lot and a lot of it is really based on preference but uh, there is different categories of rods and um, I'm gonna try to keep it real simple to kind of help you select the best rod for you especially if you're new to the game especially if you're like okay I'm trying to figure out this whole rod thing, Ruben, and I don't know what's the best direction to go. So in this Texas All Water Fishing, we're going to discuss just that. Inshore saltwater fishing, best rods, best way to select a rod for you. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment in the video, in the comment section of this video. It really helps a lot. Turn that bell notification on. Let you know the next time I upload a video. And thanks for coming back. All right, there is four basic actions of fishing rods. Okay, four basic actions. We're going to try to keep, again, we're going to try to keep this as simple as possible. There's a lot of different variations out there. There's a lot of different possibilities. There's a lot of different reasons why you would choose a rod. But we're try to keep it as simple as possible. All right. There's four different actions of a fishing rod. You start off. It goes from lightest or it goes from fastest to slowest. Fastest to slowest. What that means is your rods, all rods bend. So what that means is... As much as the rod bends, as quick as it goes to being upright, is fast, or the fastest. That's extra fast. The more the rod bends, and the slower it goes to being upright, that's slow action. So you have extra fast and slow action. And then you have a few in the middle. So extra fast, what that action of rod is really known for is its sensitivity but it gives up castability because of the leverage that you have boom that's it boom your lure's gone slower rod more leverage more power more energy longer cast but gives up sensitivity so you have to ask yourself do i want more sensitive or do I want more castability? Extra, fast, slow action. Extra, fast, slow action. Typically when you are looking at a extra fast or fast, you're, those are your lighter lures. Those are your more finesse lures. Something slower falling, something that you want to work and have a little more finesse to it. Medium or moderate and slow action is your is your your bigger baits and and you're not really too worried about f too much about finesse. Now you will give up some sensitivity uh, like I said before, but you can really zip those those lures out there. You can really really go and 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 selecting out of those four selecting is also what you're targeting. What you're targeting, what lures you're using with. So keep that in mind. So if you're somebody who wants to target a certain kind of species um, or maybe you want to set up a rod and say you want to set up a trout rod or you want to set up a red rod and wait what is the best rod for yourself typically the um, your fast action rods they they you lose a lot of flexibility so you can run in and get in a little trouble when you're trying to fight the fish where like a slow action rod can really absorb in the flexibility, it can really absorb those big, powerful fish, those those big inshore reds that we'll get into sometimes. So keep that in mind, okay? Keep that in mind when you're when you're selecting your rod based on action. Now you have action and you have power. So power power goes from so action is flexibility, right? Castability, sensitivity. Power is 
your backbone. Power is the backbone of your rod. You have ultralight, which <laughs> it's in the name, and you have heavy. So you have ultralight on one end and then heavy on the other. And then you have all these other ones in, in the middle. You have ultralight, you have light, you have light medium, you have medium, medium light, you have medium heavy, and you have heavy. So you have all of them in the middle. Ultralight, again, it's it's like a, uh, um, if you're targeting a certain species that isn't really going to be just a brute. Uh, most of the time, most ultralight rods are used for more inshore. Not saying that, I'm uh, not inshore, I'm sorry, freshwater. Not saying that you can't use ultralights for saltwater. I have, I, I have a few ultralights and a few lights, but not saying that you can't use them, okay? But ultralights and lights are really more for freshwater, or typically that they're for freshwater, are more freshwater anglers use ultra lights and lights. I'm not going to say something's not for salt because God knows I use saltwater rods. I use freshwater rods. I use freshwater reels. I use freshwater baits. I use freshwater hooks. I, I don't care. I don't care. So if you're using it, don't think that um, you're doing anything wrong. If you're fishing, you're doing the right thing. So ultra and lights are more for like more finesse, right? It is gonna, it's, you're you're going to have a softer backbone. When you start getting into medium and medium heavy, well, those are for those bigger fighting fish. Those are for the big reds. Those are for those those real big, uh, maybe sheephead, black drums, maybe some big flounder. Those are for those big guys. So, and it's all based on preference. It's really all based on preference. What where you feel comfortable at. So you're like Ruben. I don't have a preference. I have no idea. I don't have purpose. Cause trust me, I was like that too. I had no idea. I had no idea what I was doing. All right? I watched a couple YouTube videos and I seen a couple guys using ultralights and I go out there and I bought myself an ultralight reel, I mean rod, and I take it out and I miss like, <laughs> I got like on eight flounder and I missed every single one of them. I couldn't get the hook set. Couldn't get the hook set. So keep that in mind. Have your rod less of a bin, better hook set. Lighter rod, the more finesse. If I'm targeting trout, if I'm targeting, again, this is based, this is my preference now. This is just me talking off the cuff. If I'm targeting trout, then I will go with a lighter rod. That's a trout rod. If I'm targeting, like I was talking about, if I was tar targeting more of a heavier hook set, more of a heavy fighting fish, then I would use a heavier rod. Uh, I do like a medium heavy when I am using a cork, because I can get really get that pop. Throw that cork out, pop, pop, pop. I want a lot of pop on it. I want a lot of torque on it. I want a lot of energy to make that cork sound. That I want that sound, that cork gun sound, off the water when I'm popping my cork. If you're not making that sound, you're not doing the cork right. So, medium heavy, love it. Love it for the cork. Love it for flounder. I like it for sheephead too. Flounder, sheephead, Bony jaws, got to get that good hook set. I know a lot of people who <laughs> will say, Ruben, you're just yanking the fish out of the water with that hook set. Well, because I'm trying to get that penetration. I, I don't want to lose the fish. Um, again, you know, medium, medium heavy for those reds. I And when it comes to action, I like a fast. I like fast. I like the, I like the middle of the road, right? So I don't want it too, too heavy. I don't want it uh, too, too slow. And I don't want it too, too fast. Or like extra fast, so I like it meeting the road. So if you're if you're looking for your rod for the first time, I would suggest medium fast. It's medium power fast action. The reason for that is because that that's such a versatile rod. You can use that um, for trout. You can use that for flounder. You can use that for reds. Just keep in mind, flounder sheephead, thick jaws. Really got to set that hook. Really have to set that hook. Trout, and not too worry about it. Trout, yes, you want to set the hook, but you don't want to set it too, too hard because you'll rip the hook right out of his mouth. The, the real, real thin, real thin mouths. Reds a lot of time will set the hook for you. You still want to make sure you dig it in, get that good hook set, and just hold on. You know, just just fight them. And and so it's not it's not as complicated. Selecting a rod is not as complicated as it's made out to be. Don't be overwhelmed, okay? 
go in when you are looking at rods and you are selecting your rods. Go in what you want to target and what you feel comfortable casting. So if you want to cast real far, you want the big distance, you 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 lose, use a lot of bigger lures, then you might want to go for a slow action rod. You want that more cast. Uh, if you're like me and um, I want every advantage I can get, so I like a fast rod. I like not extra fast, but I like a fast rod. I want some of that sensitivity. I want to know when I feel that fish. Um, I want to be able to set that hook quick, and and that's why, like in this flounder season, I've been using a, I've been using a fast action rod instead of um, maybe a, a slow action rod, more of a fast action rod, because I want to feel that sensitivity. I want to feel when it's there. So I want to hurry up and get my hook set. I don't want to get in trouble or I don't want it to swallow the hook. I want a nice, clean hook set right in the side of the mouth. Boom, and I'm in there. Now, Ruben, I don't know what size of rod I want. Seven foot, five foot, six foot. Listen, the bigger the rod, the longer the cast you get. Right, that's why they sell like twelve foot surf rods, not five foot surf rods. Well, they might have five foot surf rods, but the the bigger the rod, the longer the cast, the longer the cast you get. Uh, typically, the smaller the rod, the easier, in my mind, it is to fight the fish, to net the fish. Right. So if you have a six six foot rod and you're weight fishing, that's perfect. Six 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 nine, that's perfect when you're. Holding your rod tip up and you're trying to get the get the fish in the net. Now that's that's perfect. Um, I I, st I still will fish with a seven foot rod, and you see it a lot of times when you're like just net the fish. Well, because it's a seven three rod, man. Sorry, my I don't have long arms. <laughs> it's a seven three three rod, and I'm trying my best to get the fish in the net. And and the same thing goes for kayaking. You know, you, I like the seven footers. I like to get because again, I'm fishing with a fast action rod. So I'm not getting the cast ability that I would out of a slow action rod. So I will go up in size. I'll be fishing with a 7.3 rod or a 7.1 rod just to get that little bit of that extra cast in there. When I want to fish with a cork, I'm not too worried about it because you get a lot of that leverage with the heaviness and the weight of the cork. Medium heavy, zip that cork out, pop, pop, pop. You're good all day. So I hope this helps you when you are looking and, and selecting a rod. Um, and cost, let me just say this, okay? Cost goes into the rod based on the materials it's made out of, okay? The more expensive the metal is, the more expensive the graphite is, the more expensive the handle is, the more expensive the rod is. Yes, people say, and I say it myself, a hundred dollar rod works just as good as a two hundred dollar rod or hundred fifty dollar rod but keep that in mind that the more expensive the rod is typically the lighter it's going to be so if you're comparing like medium to medium or heavy to heavy or ultralight to ultralight typically the lighter it's going to be and the more durable it's going to be the better materials are made out of the more uh, should the longer lasting it should be, the more resistant to a lot of the saltwater elements that we have. So when you are looking at rods and you're selecting the rods and you're like, man, I don't want to pay, you know, an arm or leg. Well, keep in mind, you're going to pay one way or the other. Uh, I have lower end rods and I have a few rods that are, you know, a little higher end, you know, about $200 price range. And where I pay at is in the cast, in the arm. Right, because the uh, more expensive the rod is, the better material it's made out of. The lighter it is, the more cast you can get out of it. And that's kind of one of the reasons why when I started doing YouTube and I started doing a lot more kayak fishing, I uh, I and started fishing on a lot more lures and really started looking into the rods. I used to fish with ultra and light rods because, again, in my price range, those weighed less, so I would get more casting. And the problem is my hook set. My hook set isn't there. My hook set's not there for ultralight or light rods. People are going to say, well, you know what? I fish with them all the time. I don't have a problem with it. Well, hats off to you. Congratulations. You must be a beast when you're setting that hook. Um, me, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't. I can't get that good hook set because I like to I like to flounder fish. I like going out to flounder a lot, so I can't get that really good hook set on flounder. If you're just a trout guy and you can and ultra and light work for you and, and your trout, well, again, hats off to you. But um, not not that big of a trout guy. More into a flounder. But 
Hey guys, I hope this helps you when it's select. I try to keep this as simple as possible, right? There's a lot more. There's a lot more when you, I mean, then, then you're talking about lure size, fish you're targeting, uh, size and line. There's a lot that go into selecting rods, but this is just the foundation. This is just me keeping it simple. If you have a best rod company that you like, then leave in the description section below. Maybe uh, I'll take a look at them and maybe one of the other viewers or subscribers might be interested in it as well. But thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that sub button, bell notification, thumbs up, share the video. Everything helps tremendously. And until next time, I hope you catch me hooking up. Thanks.